obviously in the sports world, uh, a lot of discussion about what somebody who loses didn't do. Um, and we can kind of get to that in a minute. But that would also, um, I, I don't think, give full faith and credit to what Cameron Smith did in front of an entire um, golf world and also uh, gathered uh, patronage on the old course rooting for Rory McIlroy. That was unbelievable. Where does that rank for you, Kevin? It's pretty high up. I mean, I, I think you could – Maybe the only thing you could quibble with is that the old course isn't quite the test that it once was where guys would have to sort of choose what, you know, clubs they were going to hit into greens because, you know, the the nuances of it, they're, they're all kind of pound and driver. Although Cam was kind of one of those guys who strategically laid back on certain holes. Like he, he was the one who was thinking his way around. It, you know, how many guys are going to shoot a 30 on the back nine? It's, it's really only happened a couple times. You know, Nicholas at the 86 Masters is a sort of a famous example and that's kind of what happened to, had to happen. If you played this round 50 times, Rory probably wins 48 of them. Then he didn't really play poorly. He just didn't play great, and Cam did. Well, did he play aggressive enough, do you think, Rory? What do you think about I that? I think there's some, some holes that you could quibble with where maybe he should have gotten a little more aggressive. But I actually think what's weird to think about is I think he played this final round a lot like Tiger Woods would have played which is basically like, hey, you got to come and get me. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna basically do nothing wrong. You know, it, a lot of people sort of don't really remember how Tiger was so good at playing defense in those final rounds. Like, he didn't really throw up 65s unless he had to chase, and then he never really won one of those except for the 2019 Masters where he came from behind. And so, you know, there's a couple where, you know, Rory probably could have tried to throw the ball, you know, back to a couple back pins. But to be honest, like he just played really mistake-free golf. And it's hard to sort of look at a specific decision and say, hey, you really, you know, he, he left that eagle putt one revolution short. It's hard to sort of say, well, yeah, that you should have been more aggressive on those putts. Like he just couldn't really, he got aggressive on 17 and ma- made a great swing into the toughest hole in the world, essentially, and just couldn't make that putt. So that's kind of what it came down to. No, and he went a- up against truly one of the great, putting performances ever in, in golf, I think. I agree, and, and and it's interesting you bring up Tiger, Kevin, because uh, I don't know who it was on the NBC Sports coverage. I think it might have been Nota Begay, but um, at the very outset of the coverage, uh, a, a text message from Tiger was read on the broadcast. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, Kevin? Yeah, Where, it is. Uh, so to text to John Wood, it was, that, that, Matt Kuchar's old caddy. And that's Tiger who it was. Essentially said, you know, take care of the, the short – Par fours, make your birdies there, you know, make the birdies in the par fives, maybe do a couple of things here or there, but just basically clean up uh, everything, play a tidy round, and you'll be fine. And, and that's kind of exactly what Roy did, except for he didn't do a couple special things here or there. And I was sort of actually thinking about, like, the 2005 Masters where Tiger and Chris DeMarco were way out ahead of the field, and essentially Tiger kind of did that, played really safe, and there was that one amazing chip that we all remember, mm. and that was kind of the, the essentially the difference, the amazing thing, and Roy just never had that amazing one moment. Like, if he had had one of those, That's right. it's probably enough to hold off camp. But yeah, he just didn't have that one amazing moment.